Hey, what's going on out there? This is Wayne with Trey County Locksmith Service, and today we are checking out this magnetic lock. Um, this magnetic lock, basically, uh, it has it has moving parts, but it has internal moving parts. It doesn't have any external moving parts. And I'm not 100% sure about uh, how everything inside here works, um, but I assume that it's a series of um, smaller magnets inside here uh, and magnets inside here that, <clears throat> or magnetic material in here, that uh, make up, they, they have positive and negative uh, aspects, and then when that uh, sequence is, is met correctly with the key, um, then it goes ahead and meets the shear line and it opens the lock. Um, a couple really cool things about this. Uh, I, I've tried a couple different things and I haven't really figured out a way how to pick these um, or defeat them <clears throat> uh, non-destructively. Now, obviously destructively, uh, we probably have a couple options there, um, you know, but uh, the People are really concerned about non-destructive entry because you can obviously see once damage has been done to something like this that there's been an attack or a break-in, whereas if you use a non-destructive technique, uh, you may not even notice some of the merchandise or whatever you're trying to lock up is gone um, for quite some time. Uh, whereas if you see damage, you know right away, you can file a police report, get an insurance claim, do all that kind of stuff. Um, but what is really intriguing about this is, is there's no moving parts that are accessible. Now, why is that important? Well, number one, from a mechanical aspect, there's nothing that's going to wear out. Um, you know, every time a key goes into a lock, uh, the key or the pins or the wafers, uh, they wear on each other. And it may take quite a long time, but uh, after a long period of time, <clears throat> those things can wear together or they can wear out a little differently. And, and with different keys, and then over time wear out, um, whereas these cannot. Uh, most you know conventional locks can be picked uh, because you can access those internal moving parts. You can't access these, and that's what makes it so difficult. Um, you know, I was doing a little bit of research on on how to try and pick these, and I've you know I've spent about a week trying to mess with it, and I just haven't come up with anything. Um, clear uh, on, on how to do that. Uh, but uh, you can see this is magnetic paper here. Now maybe you would be able to kind of figure out what's inside there. You can see that's pretty cool. <clears throat> I ordered this stuff off of Amazon. It's just, <clears throat> it shows magnetic. It shows where there's magnetic force. Um, so you can see that it's in there. Uh, but it doesn't really work on there. But it gives you such a big blob and it doesn't tell you whether it's positive or negative, uh, that it really doesn't help. So if you think that you're just going to get this and slap it on a key and draw it and then, you know, arrange <clears throat> some miniature magnets to duplicate a key or replicate a key, I don't think it's going to be that easy. That's going to be a ton of work, uh, and I don't think it's really going to work out that well. So why else is it important um, and convenient to not have external moving parts? Um, <clears throat> Vandalism is one thing, uh, the cold, uh, freezing, snow, dirt, the elements, all these things <clears throat> can get in a lock and cause it to fail or cause it to not operate with the key properly. So if we eliminate all that and have no accessible moving parts, <clears throat> then you have quite a unique product. Um, a couple other advantages to this over uh, <clears throat> conventional um, cam cylinder locks like this is that uh, the key itself? One of the one of the problems that I see in the field, um, especially big chain stores, uh, you know, big box stores, they really, really have a problem with the employees breaking keys and you know, over forcing things. A lot of time, those locking cabinets that they have at those big box retail stores <clears throat> that are um, protecting the high high end merchandise. Uh, you know, electronics, video, ga video games, stuff like that. They are so hard on stuff because the employees just don't care. You know, they're making whatever they're making, and they don't care about keys and locks. If there's any kind of binding, they're just going to wrench on it until the key snaps. I get a ton of business from that. In fact, I get a ton of business by replacing them with different solutions uh, for that particular problem 
and uh, this is one of the best ones that I've seen. I would actually think that this is probably the best solution that I've seen to that. Uh, there's supposed to be, uh, what is it, a couple thousand different combinations uh, of keys, so we're not talking about, you know, like four different locks or, you know, multiple keys that actually operate multiple, <clears throat> like, universal type keys. They're, they're actually talking about, you know, custom pinning for, for certain uh, markets and brands. But um, even the tubular style locks with the great big giant keys, I think Kenston or Kirsten or one of those companies, they make a giant key with an 8-pin tumbler or an 8-pin tubular lock. Uh, great big giant key. It has claws that grab around it. Um, very heavy duty, but I've still seen employees bend and break and snap those and and get the lock uh, one click off, and then you can't get the key in. You know, I, I don't even understand how that happens. And these are solid chunks of, you know, pretty decent sized steel, but I don't, I, I still see that system failing quite often in one store. So if that's happening in one store, <clears throat> it's probably a fairly large problem across the board. Um, whereas this, you can only put so much force on it before the key just spins. <clears throat> you can see that all that keeps that in there is just this one little groove. You can see the little groove a little better on here. Groove goes in there, groove goes in there, and it just operates nice and smooth. Now, if there's binding, they're not going to be able to crank on it that hard. I mean, they'll break the key, or they'll break the, the glue that holds the magnet to the key before they break the lock cylinder, which the key can easily be replaced, whereas once the lock cylinder's broke, or keys broke off in there, sometimes you have to go in there and drill that lock out, destroy it, and then completely replace it. Um, at least that's my, <clears throat> that's my um, opinion on the, the, uh, the uh, tubular style locks that I've seen. I mean, once they, once they skip, a, skip a notch or, or you know, become damaged, um, they just don't operate, and you, you have to destroy it. Whereas this, you wouldn't. You just order another key or have some on hand. Uh, better to destroy the key than the lock. <clears throat> so I see all of that as a very positive, uh, unique way to do that. Plus, most people are, you know, there's lock picking is very, very big on YouTube. Um, you know, everybody's picking pretty much anything imaginable. Uh, whereas this would be a little bit different. Um, you're not going to be able to manipulate it with tools. Uh, so it would offer a completely different presence. Um, so more security. I would somewhat consider this, at this point in time, almost like a high security lock. Um, it, it doesn't have the weak vulnerabilities that most systems do. And it probably comes at a whole lot better price point than uh, some of the other high-end um, options such as Multilock, ASA, <clears throat> and Medico. They, they all make high security options, but again, you've got, you're going back to those accessible mechanical moving parts that can be tampered with uh, and vandalized. Uh, where that's not going to happen on here, they can become full of dirt or even frozen. Um, you know, that's a good point right there is, you know, water and stuff is not going to get in here to freeze it unless you froze the whole entire lock cylinder. <clears throat> um, but yeah, definitely a really, really cool idea. Uh, I look forward to seeing this on other products. Um, so definitely check it out. Uh, if you want, I'm going to post some information down below. We'll post a link on where you can get them and who manufactures them and all that fun stuff. Um, if you want to see how the inside of this lock works uh, and, and how to bypass it, check out wayneslockshop.com. We're going to be going in there, and we're going to be going in and taking this thing apart and really seeing what makes it tick and seeing how to destructively defeat it because under certain circumstances, you know, if they lose the keys, they have an emergency, something happens, something malfunctions in here, we are going to need to have some form of way of, of overriding this. Uh, but that's going to be on the private page. Check out wayneslockshop.com. Check out the information below, and check out these magnetic locks. Thanks for watching. Wayne's Lock Shop, we strive to be the leading resource in tips, tricks, and educational videos for locksmiths. Videos are added every week on topics ranging from rekeying high security locks to marketing your locksmith business and everything in between. Safe openings. 
car openings, installation tool reviews, and bypass methods are all plentiful on this secure website built by and for locksmiths. If you are a locksmith and want an inexpensive resource that will prove invaluable to you and your business, then Wayne's Lock Shop is the place for you. Please sign up today at waynesLockshop.com.